I should have refilled my wine. Oh, well. Mm. Good berries. Such good strawberries. Nice. Hey, everyone. It's Mark Sievers. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So it's Saturday. The Let's see. I think it's the second Saturday in May, if I'm not mistaken. And tonight is another Together Live. So you guys really seem to love spending time with me on Saturday nights, and I love spending time with you. So for the rest of the month of May, I have a Together Live scheduled for every Saturday night. You can get this full schedule on my website, marksievers.com. And tonight, Mr. Sievers, the other Mr. Sievers, is also mic'd so that um, he can ask the questions to that you're uh, replying with and i think it's going to be a really good night tonight so Hi everybody there he is there he is so i have my glass of wine which is almost well not almost empty it will be empty very soon so if you're sipping along sante cheers to saturday night mm. perfect little french chardonnay for a tonight's Paris-inspired strawberry country cake. So, so many great little tips along the way for this cake, but mostly I look forward to making this cake. I start making this cake about this time every year, and I make it all summer long. It is, to me, the perfect cake to kind of welcome that beautiful golden hour light. Farmers markets are starting to pop open places, uh, farm stands, maybe you even have strawberries in your own garden. I don't garden, so I don't know exactly when you plant them or how often or when they start to grow. But one of the things that I love about right now in the, in the grocery stores is that they're filled with beautiful fresh fruit. And I mean, look at how giant the strawberry is. That's like the size, a little bit bigger than like a golf ball. So this cake is one of those cakes that once you really master it, and there's really, it's really not complicated. It's, it's a pretty foolproof cake. But once you make it and you serve it, this will be your go-to summer dessert, one of them, your go-to summer dessert for decades, and I really mean that, decades and decades to come. I have made this cake probably in the past five years. I bet you I've made this cake 150 times for people, for guests, for dinner parties, to bring it places, and it's just a wonderful cake. So it was inspired by a trip to Paris. So if you're watching along and cooking, let's start first by preheating our oven to 350 degrees. Now we'll get back into all of the chit chat. So my oven's preheated already. So I did remember that this time. So if you guys have been to Paris, let me know. Let me know as, I, as I'm as i sharing my favorite stories about Paris, share yours. Ryan will, um, you know, answer your questions about Paris or, or re respond to your lovely comments. And um, I think it's gonna be a wonderful evening. So. Paris for us is a really special place um, and you know there's so many options in Paris like any major city and I find that just like in you know New York or Chicago or Los Angeles there's really special places that I go to over and over and over again and there's this little bakery and tea house called uh, Mamie Gâteau which translates essentially to granny cakes. So it's very um, old fashioned desserts, very country desserts. And I have, when I stumbled upon this wonderful little place in Saint-Germain on the 6th, I just fell in love with its sim simplicity and just the coziness that all of the desserts had. They were all laid out on a sideboard, no refrigeration cases. Um, and they were just beautiful, all served on like mismatched plates in China. And 
you know, I'm just, that is so my vibe. So <laughs> I have fallen in love with Mamie Gatto. Um, and if you go to Paris, you should definitely check it out. But this is where the inspiration came for this cake. So let's kind of get started and we'll kind of ease into it. We're not in any rush tonight. Um, and I want to make sure that if you're cooking along, you have time to do exactly what I'm doing. So I know a lot of you have already prepared your ingredients, but I wanted to show you a couple tips. And the first one is how to hull a strawberry. So if you watched my um, 10 year anniversary with Ryan Lee to, uh, together live, I had this little trick of this piece of parchment paper on top of my cutting board. And what this does is prevent any kind of um, flavor transmission from the board. I, you know, I cut a lot of onions and herbs and things, but when I cut berries and other things, I always put down a piece of parchment paper so that there's no flavor transmission. And the quickest way to do strawberries is I use just a serrated knife and I just go around kind of at like a 90 degree angle just around where that green leaves leaves are and then just pop out the center and that really is the easiest way to haul a strawberry and then I need these to be three quarter inch diced so you don't have to get out a ruler and measure them to be exact so I'm just gonna eyeball it and a serrated knife really does do a great job at making sure that you get nice clean cuts and Et voila. So that was a perfectly hulled and diced strawberry. So, so far we're good. And now we want to prepare our dry ingredients. So I know I've showed you guys how I prepare flour. I know I've told you the story many times of Nan putting flour in a hand sifter and sifting on parchment paper. And so I'm going to spare you that even though I just kind of told you. But for flour, I'm using just all-purpose flour, and I have a just a fine mesh sieve set over just a medium bowl. I'll move my wine. And what I'm gonna do is take my dry measure, one cup measure, and just kind of lighten the flour in the container. Nice and light, and then scoop, and then just level it off with my finger, and place that into the sieve and then do the same thing with the half cup measure. So I find that this really does work well every single time and you don't need any special really equipment. I mean this this handheld um, fine mesh sieve I use for draining you know for, um, vegetables and other things. So it's just a great all-purpose tool. And then we need some sea salt. I bake with fine sea salt because it passes through the sieve a lot easier. Quarter teaspoon. And I have a quarter teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And then all we have to do is sift it all together. Try to keep most of it in the bowl. It's always a welcomed maneuver. And that's dry ingredients. So pretty simple. Um, not really any, I think the biggest tip there is how to just get the flour to be nice and light so you're getting the proper measure. Um, and then we want to, I want to get my pan prepared. So I know last week when we were making, let's see, what did we make last week? We made the, my goodness, I'm, oh, the fig and cream scones. Yes. I showed you my kind of baking pan collection. And one of the most utilized pans I have is the eight by eight inch uh, square pan. And that's what we're gonna use tonight. So you can either use butter and flour to prepare your pan, or I have something called Baker's Joy so Baker's Joy is essentially like a nonstick baking spray that has flour in it. And this is great for those really hard to um, kind of those molds with crevices in them, like a bunt pan, things like that. But I thought tonight I would just use this as well because it just goes on really quick. And I usually do it in the sink so it doesn't get all over the place. But 
Ryan agreed to clean up tonight. So I'm going to use every inch of this counter. Right, darling? Yeah, we're going to talk about that when we're off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Dad's mad. There you go. <laughs> so, I'm gonna get this parchment paper out of the way. So now let's move on to our wet ingredients. So, and another little sip of wine, I think. So wet ingredients, I'm using my stand mixer. It's fitted with a paddle attachment. And the paddle attachment that most stand mixers have, where I can give them a little overhead, they're great the way that what it comes with, but I found this lovely paddle attachment with a silicone or rubber spatula on one end. And that really does kind of help clean the sides of the bowl as it's mixing. And I love, I love that. So I'm gonna use one cup of granulated sugar. Darling, you're slightly off camera. Uh-oh. Push, push forward just a little bit. Oh, sorry, everybody. We didn't adjust before we started. There we go. There we go. Sorry, everyone. So we have one cup of sugar, and then to that I'm going to add eight tablespoons of French unsalted room temperature butter. So I know I've talked to you a lot about butter. French butter, Irish butter, European style butter, it really does make a huge difference in your baking. It, it takes your, because it has more flavor and it kind of has a richer taste, it really does kind of like amp up that beautiful rich butter flavor. And this is beautiful French butter. It's been at room temperature since this morning, so it's nice and pliable and soft. And the next time you, if you give it a little taste, mm, it just tastes like pure, rich butter. So I think that will be delicious in our Paris-inspired strawberry country cake. So we have a question. If you don't have a stand mixer, can you use a hand mixer? Or Absolutely. what's the best way to do it? Yeah, so stand mixers, again, you know, I always talk about my childhood because I now have a lot of what I, you know fancier kitchen equipment that we didn't have as a kid, but we always had beautiful desserts and gorgeous food. Um, stand mixers, if you don't have one, you can certainly use a handheld mixer. What happens though when you use a handheld mixer is that you don't want to whip it. Um, you just want to gently cream it, cream the butter and sugar together. So don't so keep your mixer maybe on low speed you know, medium, low speed, and you don't want to incorporate tons of air into it um, using those, those beaters. Um, and I'm sure you could do this by hand. I don't need muscles that badly. <laughs> so I'm just going to tilt my mixer down. Is anybody out there using a handheld, uh, a hand mixer? Let Ryan know. I think uh, Christine is. Oh, okay. So yeah, perfect. So just keep it on medium low speed. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna put this on medium low speed until it's nice and... Yum. Butter and sugar already smells good. So I want this to cream together for just a few minutes until it's light and fluffy. Um, you know, you really can't overbeat it at this stage. Um, if it was on high, maybe it would, it would um, you know, maybe get a little too fluffy. But this, you just want to get that gorgeous pale yellow. And so I want to talk to you as that's mixing. I want to talk to you about country desserts because this is what I would consider like the quintessential country dessert, that dessert that you can make during the week that you can kind of nibble on throughout the week or you can make it on the, for the weekend for like a great, you know, when we're having dinner parties, but a great dinner party, things like that. I love country desserts because they're so pure and it, it's the essence to me of what maybe a strawberry cake should taste like. Or if, 
you've been on my website and you've seen my recipe for my one bowl banana cake. That banana cake is like, it's the essence of banana. And what I love about these kind of like country desserts is they're very rustic and they really just use a kind of a base of a lot of the same ingredients over and over again, but we're just changing the flavors and changing the, the, the um, you know, the fruit. You could bake this, I'm sure, with blueberries or raspberries, um, but strawberries, when they're in season, mm, is perfect. And these are some good strawberries I got today at the grocery store. So that looks just about right, nice, light and fluffy. So I'm gonna turn this down. I have two extra large room temperature eggs and I'm just gonna add them in one at a time and let each one fully incorporate. Can you overmix? At this point, you really can't overmix. I mean, I wouldn't let it run for, you know, 10 or 20 minutes, but you know, you're really just looking for um, everything to be nice and smooth and well incorporated. And then another egg, like so. I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, now we're gonna add two tablespoons of honey. I use the same honey in the same bottle for about 10 years. So I know when I press and count what a tablespoon is. Um, if you put in two and a half tablespoons, nothing's gonna happen, so don't worry. And then some good pure vanilla extract, about, I would say three quarters of a teaspoon-ish. <laughs> and then this is when we're gonna add some lemon zest. So lemon zest with strawberries really brings out all of the flavor of the strawberries, but also adds a little bit of a lemony punch, which is really good. And I know I've said to you so many times, whenever I zest citrus, I always do it over the bowl because I want to get all those essential oils into the recipe instead of onto my board. And that's exactly true even right now. So I just have two, we need about two teaspoons of lemon zest. It's about two medium sized lemons. And I have my rasper microplane. And I'm just gonna do this right over the bowl. When you do this at home, you'll see all of the beautiful essential oils from that bright, thin, bright part of the skin kind of like shoot out. I know I say that all the time, but you will see it and you will smell it at home. And you just wanna get the bright yellow outside of that beautiful peel. You don't wanna go too deep and get any of that white pith because that's on the bitter side. We want this to be beautiful and citrusy and not bitter. So while you're doing that, Laura uh, from Vermont is, has rhubarb left over <gasps> from last season in the freezer. Ooh. And she's gonna add about three quarters of a cup to the strawberries. So should she displace Correct. strawberries? Yes, so that's a great question, Laura. So this cake, and uh, you know, actually I'm glad you brought this up. I'm gonna put this lemon in in a second. But, <clears throat> When I was making this cake, I really wanted it to be jam-packed of strawberry. So the cake is actually kind of very fruit heavy, which makes for a very heavy cake, but still with a light texture. So strawberries are very juicy. So you, you do want to take out three quarters of a cup of strawberries for the rhubarb. And you want to make sure that the rhubarb is cut in roughly the same size pieces as well. And will you say rhubarb for me the way you normally do? <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. I just rhubarb. <laughs> rhubarb. Rhubarb. We, we went through a pretty significant um, cycle. I don't know, that's like 30 minutes of how do you say rhubarb? Rhubarb. 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 It was, it was awesome. So, nice. Mm, I love lemon zest. It smells and the good, amazing. You I can, can smell, smell it from there? From here, yeah. yeah. 
And the good part about this lemon, once you zest them, you really, I mean, you can cut them and use the juice for something. You could make homemade lemonade. Um, you know, it, you don't have to throw it away. You can just slice it even and put it in some tea. So make sure you get all of the underneath from that rasp. And then mix it around. Notice I don't immediately turn on and whip the thing on high. There's, there's really no reason to go when you're just kind of incorporating ingredients nice and low with a little bit more quiet, a little bit more enjoyable. Okay, so now we're gonna scrape the bowl. So this is the thing with a stand mixer is that you always wanna kind of, before we start adding some dry ingredients into this, we wanna scrape all this down. And of course, I'm doing it backwards, <laughs> which is a little difficult. Okay, that looks pretty good. It smells delicious. So now it's time to add in our dry ingredients and our buttermilk. So buttermilk, I have half a cup, room temperature, really room temperature. This has been sitting out for probably an hour and a half, two hours. And the reason we're using room temperature eggs and room temperature butter and room temperature buttermilk is those will incorporate much better into your batter. If, you, if everything is cold, it's almost like the mixture will seize up. And when I say room temperature, I don't mean it's been sitting out for 20 minutes. I mean, I really mean the butter should be like not melting, but it should be soft and you could run the, your tip of your finger and leave an indent in it and then lick your finger. So it's always a good thing. So with the dry ingredients and my buttermilk, I'm gonna do it um, in, incorporate it in stages. I'm gonna begin and end with the flour. So nice low speed, you don't have to whip it on high. Now is this where you have to worry about over mixing once you add the dry? Yeah, so this is, that's a great question, Ryan. So this is where we don't wanna over mix. We'll end up with a very tough cake. I feel like the flour in thirds seems to be, see, and we're not, the, the mixer's not on, you know, this is just on the stir setting. So, I, and I think this is perfect. And this will prevent it from getting over mixed. Last of the buttermilk. So there's another question from Linda. Okay. Hi, Linda. Uh, thinking of adding blueberries. Absolutely. So as long as you have in this recipe, you're looking for one pound of fruit, one pound of whole strawberries. So you can certainly change it up a little bit. And we don't want to overmix this. So that's perfect. Um, what I will say, Linda, is there's also another recipe on my website for my triple berry flag cake. That It's a beautiful half sheet pan pound cake dotted inside with raspberries and strawberries and blueberries. And that's a, another wonderful cake that uses berries. Different texture and things, but um, check out that recipe too for additional uses of blueberries. And her quick, another quick question with the blueberries yep. is, should she coat them in flour? like you do with other baking, or does that matter? You know, for this cake, I tried coating the strawberries in flour and then not. I really didn't find a difference. Um, blueberries might be a little different because they're a lot smaller, so I'd probably toss those with a tablespoon or so of flour, just like we did when we made, um, I have a video coming up for my uh, blueberry muffins, or maybe it's already, I think the muffin recipe is already out there. And that recipe, I coated the flour, the blueberries with some flour. So, okay, you guys, we have cake. So, unlike last time, I'm not gonna forget to fold in the fruit, like I did with my fig and cream scones, but we need to get all of this gorgeous batter off of the beater. If you guys are cooking along, let me know where you are if you need me to slow down a bit or if we're all caught up. Perfect. Okay, so now give this another 
nice big scrape, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom. And then Ryan, give them a beautiful overhead now of this, this, because this is where it gets all of these berries. I mean, this is such a fruit heavy cake and you just want to gently fold these in. I mean, this is going to be so delicious. Make sure it's nicely folded and incorporated. And that's it. So would it. you say you just fold it in? You just fold it in. You, you just fold, fold it in. It in. <laughs> Another Schitt's Creek reference. You fold it in. We will simply never be able to say those words for the rest of our lives <laughs> What's it mean? It's you. some connection to that. It just, it's just the way it is. Do you guys know, wait, okay. Do you guys know the scene Moira and David are making enchiladas? I know we've said this enchiladas. one of the other times. And he's reading a recipe and he goes, now you fold in the cheese. And they're so confused and like, how do you fold in cheese? So what you does that mean? Fold it in. <laughs> So He's, I swear to God, if you say fold it in one more time. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to gently scrape this into my prepared pan. Oh my God, so delicious. So just take a little snitch of that batter and tell me. That does not taste delicious. Mm. Lemony. Okay, so now I'm just kind of coaxing this into the sides. I'm trying to get it to be all one. I'm not really pressing it down. I'm just kind of using my spatula and just gently running across the top. Just like this. Okay. And more better. So, LJA says we need to find a new culinary word for fold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to clean up a little bit, get you let get you guys let you guys get your cake into the pan because we're going to move on. All right. So, are you guys ready? Let's put our cake into the oven. So, preheated oven, 350 degrees, pan right into the lower third, right into the center of, onto that rack. I'm going to set mine, it's going to bake for about 40 to 50 minutes. If your oven runs hot, bake it, start at 40. If your oven runs pretty temperature controlled, 45 to 50 minutes. I'm going to put mine on 50 minutes, yeah. However... I already have a cake that I did ahead of time because I wanted to show you how to make some whipped cream. And I also wanted to talk about how to unmold the cake because it is such a heavy fruit cake. <laughs> Not a fruit cake, but it's a heavy cake with fruit. It has a tendency when you take it out of the pan to the edge, an edge might want to crack off. So I have a couple tips to show you. So let's go back out here and I'm going to take all of this stuff. Oh my goodness. Okay. So now this is the good part. So after your cake bakes, we're going to top it with some freshly whipped cream. And this is a wonderful cake you can make ahead of time. Store it in the refrigerator if you want to, or just store it at room temperature in a covered container. And you can make it really up to probably two days ahead of time, three days ahead of time. And what I love about this particular cake, like I said, is that it's such a fruit heavy cake. And it poses a challenge. This is the only, and I, I don't want to say drawback of the cake, but sometimes when you take it out of the pan, because it's so heavy, an end will kind of start to like crack off a little bit. It's fine. You're going to put whipped cream on top of it anyway. But this is my trick to kind of get it out onto the pan. So out of the pan and onto the cooling rack, I should say. 
So when the cake comes out, you let it cool in the pan for about 20 to 25 minutes. That will let the cake kind of solidify a little bit. Let And I, I just unearth it right onto a, sh a cooling rack. Be this cake, you want to get it right side up onto your serving platter. So I take another cooling rack. I know this is going to seem crazy, but this is, I've been doing the same thing for like 15 years. I take it, I flip it just like this. So now I'm looking at the cake upside down and then I have my, my serving platter and then I just put the cake pretty much onto the center flip it over, and et voila. So you need two cooling racks for that. But I don't know. I just find that that always works. The cake very rarely breaks. Ryan, give them a little overhead just so I can show them. See, there's a little crack here because there's probably a big hunk of strawberries right there that were a little heavy. But it's okay. This is going to get a gorgeous layer of whipped cream. So, so this is a cake then that you know because sometimes you flip the cake upside down because you want the flat bottom on the top this is not one of those cakes that you do that this is the this is the type of cake you can if you don't have two cooling racks and you need to get it onto your platter and it's upside down that doesn't matter either because it's going to be topped with whipped cream no one's going to know so let's make whipped cream so we need one cup of very cold whipped cream. I have a new, new bowl. One cup of very cold whipped cream. Ish. <laughs> and my, now I'm going to do this with a whisk attachment. And my bowl is very, very nice and clean. One cup. And I'm going to add a tablespoon of sugar. I don't like sweet overly sweet things. The strawberries itself are already nice and sweet, so I just want to add a little bit of sugar. But I want this to taste like just beautiful fresh cream instead of sugary whipped cream. But a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, pure vanilla extract. And here's the trick, you guys. So if I tilted this down and then swipped this to high, this cream would be all over the entire house, all over me. It would probably reach Ryan and you'd have a mess. So what I like to do is start it very slow. I want to eat it, not wear it. You want to eat it, not wear it, right. Start it slow, work your way up. And with whipped cream, there's, I like mine to be very softly whipped. Um, if you, and you can, this is the one stage where you can over whip something. If you whip this too much, you'll get, actually you'll make butter. Um, there's a website post at markzevers.com for fancy schmancy butter. And um, it shows you how to make homemade butter using fresh cream in your stand mixer. So this is where you can over whip it, but we wanna, we want to rip, whip it real good. <laughs> Song reference. So I'm just going to, I'm just gradually raising the speed. And I'd rather, to high, one more. There we go. So I'd rather s have to start and stop this multiple times, but I get that perfectly textured whipped cream that I'm looking for very, very soft, very pillowy. And it goes from very soft and pillowy to um, over whipped very, very quickly. So I'm going to stop it right now. And Ryan, give them a little, I know we whipped cream together before, but see like this to me is perfect whipped cream. It just holds its shape. It's nice and soft. Hmm. And it just tastes like fresh cream. It's so delicious. That's done. So what was that? Maybe a minute and a half? Mmm. 
That's good whipped cream. <clears throat> so, my cake is completely cooled. Not warm, not lukewarm. It is cool to the touch, completely cooled. If you put your whipped cream onto your warm cake, you will have a melted mess. So I'm just using an offset spatula. And this, you would not want to do this until you're getting ready to serve it. So you can excuse yourself to go into the kitchen to make whipped cream quickly. Once you're your guests will not mind once they see what you brought back, trust me. So, and just gently, nothing fancy here, right? Just going over to the edge, if it falls a little bit off, that's fine too. You know, and it's a very plain cake, it's very unassuming, and that's what I love about this, is when I was testing this, I had all kinds of ways to decorate. I had strawberry fans and this and that, and it just, it just seemed kind of like disingenuous and not needed. And I just wanted just a beautiful whipped cream top. I mean, you could put a little strawberry on in the center if you want, but I don't know. I just I just love things that look really homemade and rustic and rustic also means you don't have to bring out piping bags, which I love. And then you can take your if you don't have an offset spatula, you can just use a regular butter knife and you can just put a beautiful little swirl design on the top. Just like that. If you had some vanilla bean paste, you could use that in your whipped cream instead. I didn't, I used to have vanilla bean paste. I've used it all and unfortunately I can't find it right now. Um, but that will give your vanilla, that will give your whipped cream a little bit of speck, speckled to it and that will look nice too. But how gorgeous is that, right? I love this cake. So now I'm gonna show you the inside. So let's see. So while you're cutting that, uh, yeah. and everybody else's is in the oven. Yes. Uh, I feel like this is another one where we have to be careful when you are testing it to see if it's done. Yeah. Of the so fruit. when you're the the top of the cake is going to look nice and dark and cooked. The inside, if you put a toothpick in, if you do get a strawberry, you're going to get a little bit of wetness there. So look to see if that wetness is actually cake batter or if it's the color of a strawberry. Um, between 45 and 50 minutes, your cake will be nicely cooked. So, oh, okay, let's see, my dear, if we can show them the inside of this. Oh yeah. So that is a beautiful, mm, <laughs> I want to show you, I'm going to spin this around, but look at how gorgeous. Actually, right, I have to go get a fork. So let me take this into the kitchen and I'll show them at, on this camera too. How's that for a good angle? That's good. So you see the inside is just dotted with strawberries. They're perfectly cooked inside. It's nice and moist, good crumb, good texture. But I really want a fork now. So come with me. I'm not gonna eat the whole butter. That's but, correct, because half of that is mine. Yes. But I just, this is like one of my favorite cakes ever. Look at the fruit just falls out of it. It is the essence of a strawberry cake. It's not overly sweet. It doesn't taste artificial. It just is so elegant and so understated and so chic. And it's just, again, it's just one of my favorite desserts when berries and strawberry season is upon us. So. I think it's one of my, like between this and the banana mm -hmm. cake, 
Those are my two favorite things that you bake in your, in your pound cake. And they're the me. simplest things. Yeah. You know, Ryan was saying the one bowl banana cake and this cake are his two favorites. And they're the simplest things. They're, they're, they're just taking beautiful ingredients and really just a handful of them and just making it be the essence of that banana or the essence of strawberry. So who has been to Paris? Let's take, let's like chat for five minutes. And I want to know your favorite Paris memory, and then I'll tell you mine. Maybe I'll start. Oh, that's so good. You guys, I'm so, I'm so excited for you to make this cake at home. So, oh, a favorite Paris, I mean, every memory I have in, from Paris is always it just seems like such a dream. But this is actually kind of a, a weird, little weird one. But there's a beautiful grocery store in Saint-Germain-de-Prés called La Grande Pisserie. It's owned by uh, LVMH, so which is a luxury holdings company, who have like Moet and Louis Vuitton and all these other beautiful global brands. But this particular grocery store is like the chicest grocery store I've ever been into in my life. Everything is so pristine, everything is so perfect. Um, whether you buy a six euro bottle of wine, they wrap it, oops, they wrap it in tissue. But one of my favorite memories ever was walking into the Grand Epicerie for the very first time. And there, there used to be, and I, it wasn't there last year when I was there, in the produce section, there used to be this big truck in the back of the tr this big old vintage truck. And in the back of the truck, the bed of the truck, they, they were like, you know, is where some of the fruit was. And I will never forget, I was about maybe 25 feet away from the strawberries. It was a huge strawberry display. And I have never in my life walked into a grocery store and been that far away. And you could smell the strawberries literally from a mile away. It was so beautiful. And I, I remember thinking, wow we don't have that in the u.s like when you walk up sometimes to grocery stores you don't really smell anything and that of course memory is very um appropriate for what we're making tonight but i just i'll never forget that and little siren action here we have our windows open because it's like 55 degrees out it's gorgeous out tonight i wish we could go on the beach <laughs> and take some strawberry cake but I just love that memory from Paris and the Grand Epicerie and strawberries. It's the simple things. <laughs> so uh, Liz says that it was very difficult to find buttermilk. Oh. Uh, can, uh, can you make your own? So you can make your own buttermilk. Um, buttermilk, so there's two, three different ways to have buttermilk on hand. Of course, buttermilk from the dairy section. There's all, they also make a buttermilk powder, which is like an event, like a, just a powder that you mix with water. And there's also a ratio of mixing regular whole milk and then white vinegar or lemon juice. Um, those measurements, if you just Google, I don't know that exact measurement off the top of my head. I think it's eight ounces of whole milk and maybe one or two tablespoons of some sort of acidic um, vinegar or lemon juice, just Google um, buttermilk, how to make buttermilk at home, and you'll get the, the it's the same across every website. So, I'm so, where were you, you were, you found it hard to find buttermilk, that's interesting. Connecticut. Connecticut? Yeah. Wow. She said it's snowing there too. I know, so, I'm so jealous because I am like Mr. Christmas. I love the snow. And I'm from Boston, from New England, Massachusetts originally. Um, and when I woke up this morning, because we had our windows open overnight, the apartment was nice and cold, which I love. And I woke up to all these text messages from my family in Massachusetts and in Connecticut that they were having snow on the ground. So I put on Christmas music and put on my Mariah Carey fleece onesie pajamas. And I was there with you in solidarity of the snow, and I was very happy. <laughs> People watching this back are going to think I'm insane. So you asked for Paris stories, mm -hmm. and Linda's favorite 
memory is seeing the Eiffel Tower out of the plane window for the first time, 1973. 1973. So Linda was, was a flight attendant and traveled the world. Um, and I can only imagine what that was like. Because I, I can't, I don't remember. Because it doesn't even, we don't, you don't even you don't fly, fly that, that route anymore. anymore. Yeah, I was just going to say. Right? You don't even fly over the Eiffel Tower anymore. Doesn't seem like it. Or maybe every time we fly in, I don't know. But uh, that's a nice memory. I would, nice memory. I, I would love to see the Eiffel Tower from overhead. But that that would be amazing. Well, yeah. especially in a city like Paris, because unlike New York or Chicago, where you have so many tall buildings, and sometimes a little bit hard to pick out a landmark. And the Eiffel Tower really is it just is, it's yeah, just there. Stands yeah. out completely on its mm. own. Um, and then uh, Christine Sutherland. Hi, Christine. Uh, says that it's. And also, I got your email, by the way. It's also snowing in Ontario. Hmm. Wow. Well, again, I love the snow. So, <laughs> but I, we also live in a high rise where when it snows, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> I've never lived, personally, I've never lived in a single family home before. I've always lived in some sort of apartment or multi-unit dwelling situation. So I've never had to worry about shoveling or icing or, you know, the, the, the ice melt. Um, mowing the grass. I mean, I have, I have no idea how to do any of that. So um, Ryan and I have talked about, you know, maybe in the future, maybe buying a house. And I'm like, I, I, I love the idea of the entire fantasy of having French chickens running around and a garden with piazza lights and a big rustic farmhouse table outside. And, and that's about as far as I can get because I don't know how to plant anything. I don't know how to harvest anything. I don't know how to weed anything so um maybe that's why i love the snow <laughs> comment from jennifer for her favorite paris memory oh, is bet. her birthday last year so one of our best friends in the entire world jennifer who also works with me she when we were putting the finishing touches on my cookbook french omelets your new house meal Ta-da! I love this book. I made the Provencal vegetable tea on last night. Um, I said to Jennifer, we should probably go to Paris and really final photo you know, do final photography there and get beautiful interior shots and we'll film for YouTube. And we actually filmed an entire series called My Paris Adventure. You can find the playlist on YouTube here. And it happened to be her 49th birthday when we went, and we were there for two, three, two and a half, two and half, and a half weeks. Two and a half weeks, and we had so much fun on Jennifer's birthday. We went to, of all places, we started at my favorite lunch spot, well, one of my favorite spots in general, Ralph's in Paris, again in Saint Germain de Pre, in the sixth, and we had beautiful lunch right in front of the window that overlooks kind of the courtyard because it was raining and we had these beautiful cocktails which I have a the my kind of version of that cocktail is coming up in June on my website there'll also be a tutorial video here called in the sixth spritz is what I named them um, and we had multiple of those and then on the way out of Ralph's we decided oh let's just have one more at the bar so we went to the bar and had one there. Then we went back to the apartment. We changed. Uh, and then we went to this fabulous pizza place called Luigi's. And it was, and drank Aperol Spritz all afternoon with some friends that were there. And our friend Eric, who is one of the most stylish people I know, he lives there. He owns the beautiful pottery and earthenware shop called Le Tuyalu. Um, these are his plates. So check him out, follow him on Instagram. He does the most spectacular table settings and has the most discerning eye of anybody that I know. Um, so we ate there and then afterwards we said goodbye to everybody. And then I still wasn't, we still weren't done celebrating her birthday. So we hopped into a taxi and then we went to the Ritz Paris and we had french fries and bernet sauce and 
more champagne and people watched and that was that's one of my favorite memories too jennifer we should do that again maybe in september hint hint <laughs> well you guys i hope you i'm gonna take another bite <laughs> mm. i hope you guys had fun with me tonight saturday night we baked we drank a little wine we had great conversation and regardless of how long we're supposed to be sheltering in place and quarantined and all these things, I'm really flattered that you make the time in your life to spend it with me on YouTube and cook together and have conversations together and I think the one thing out of this whole situation that we've all been enduring for, you know, two months now is I find it that it's, I find that it's bringing people closer together. And I know I've not met any of you, any except of for you. a couple, a few, a few, um, I just, I can't thank you enough for being so enthusiastic and coming with me on Saturday nights and hanging out. Um, we're going to be doing some, like I said, more together lives the entire month of May. You can get the full schedule and this full written recipe at marksievers.com. And again, I just, I have a really good time doing this and I like that it's more conversational and it's not just me going, and now we're going to add this and da, da, da. It, this is much more casual and fun and I don't know. There's really no place I'd rather be on a Saturday night at home with my husband and now you. So I hope you had a wonderful time. Please like this. Now here's all of the, you know, the logistics. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the little notification bell so you're notified of new videos as soon as they post. Head over to marksievers.com for all kinds of fun recipes. You can order my cookbooks. Shipping, unfortunately, I ship them out pretty quick due to, of course, the nature of the world right now. Shipping, once they're in transit, is taking a lot longer than normal. But I'm including little surprises in all your packages to hopefully make up for it. So. Until next Saturday, uh, let me know. Tag me on Instagram, Mark J. Sievers, when your cakes are frosted and cooled and you're eating them and enjoying them, hopefully with a little bit of bubbles. And I think Ryan deserves a piece of my strawberry country cake. I do. You do? Um, <laughs> just like so this. we're clear. But uh, Liz says that hers came out beautifully. Oh, fin She's serving it for Mother's Day. Um... Linda says, love and hugs for all the inspiration. Aww. LJA uh, says he loves hanging out. Thanks, me too. With us. And we love hanging out with LJA and everybody else. This is so much fun. Would you guys be into like the idea of doing like a vert, like how could we see them too? Like Zoom? It'd have to be a small closed group. So like first come, first serve, but... Maybe we could always, maybe, maybe Ryan and I can well, figure out. We'll put our heads together and we'll think yeah, of something. Yeah, but that could be fun. Maybe like 10 or 15 of us, small groups, because I don't want it to be too overwhelming. But that way there, you guys can cook along with me. I can see you, you can see me. And maybe that's the next iteration of this. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. When he says we'll see, he always figures it out. <laughs> you get two pieces of strawberry country cake tonight, oh, darling. Oh, like, thank you, darling. You mean two <laughs> strawberry country cakes. <laughs> well, there is another one in the oven. <laughs> Our neighbors are going to eat well tonight. Good night, guys. See you later. Strawberry country.